Hey guys, John here. So continuing with our cheesy Casio sounds that we're bringing inside to pigments, this patch is called Synth Drops and there's a really cool delay technique within this one. So it's kind of weird how it kind of plays off with the sound, but I think you'll see what I mean in just a second. So with that being said, let's jump into Bitwig and let's get started. So it sounds a little something like this. So yeah, very cheesy, a lot of fun to play. Anyway, so with that being said, let's go to our fresh copy here. Let's go to a new preset and let's select this guy. So we're listening to the new one, which is just a sine wave. So for this one, let's go from wavetable to analog. And if we look at the main one, we can see that we're using two square waves and we're doing a little bit of pulse width modulation on this guy. So with that being said, let's change the first oscillator to a square, and then we can see that the width by default is going to be a 0.648, so let's go ahead and change that to 0.648, there we go, ah, oh, I missed it, okay, there we go. So we have that, and we're slowly sweeping this here with LFO1 at an amount of 0.19, so we can drag and drop LFO1 to the pulse width, and then bring this down to 0.19. So we have that. Now, if you look at the main one, our speed is gonna be slightly slower and it's gonna be 0.483. So let's bring this down to 0.483, which is very close to the default. You probably wouldn't even notice if you just left it default. So we got this working, but we notice that every time we hit a key, it's gonna restart this square and we don't really want that. So we go down here to retrigger source and select the free running. So now it's free, no longer restrained. Okay, pretty sweet. So the next one is also gonna be a square and we don't need to do any modulation for this one. So select square, bring this all the way up into the mix. And then for the course tuning, it's gonna be up one octave or 12 semitones. So let's bring this guy right over here. So we kind of have that cheesy, hollowy, squarey, video gamey, arcadey sound, I suppose. Okay. So now we need to add some unison, so we're doing full unison here. This sounds more cheesy that way. Uh, Detune's gonna be default, but the stereo, we're bringing this down a little bit to 55.2, because that's a little too wide. All right, 55.6, that's cool. <laughs> I like playing that. Anyway, so what we need to do now is check our envelopes because it's gonna be drastically different from our default. So the attack is gonna be one millisecond, which is <laughs> default. However, we do want to bring down our sustain all the way and then our decay is going to be 975. So bring this guy up like that. And then our release is going to be 640. So bring this up to 640, something like that. So with every move, we're just trying to make it more cheesy and more cheesy. But I like cheesy sounds. So we have that done here. Now we're also adding noise here. So let's go to the noise and this is gonna be 0 0.304 because it's not exactly white noise. It's a mixture between uh, pink and white and then we can bring this up all the way in the mix. And the reason I'm doing this, so we have the two squares to kind of get that hollow -y texture sound. The unison adds obviously much more voices to that, makes it a little bit bigger. And then <laughs> we're adding some noise to give it a little bit more content because we're gonna push all this through a comb filter to get that interesting tonality. So we have that basically. Okay, so that's pretty much all we have to do inside the uh, the first engine, the analog engine. So now we should talk about the filters because here's where it gets kind of fun. So the first one is going to be a comb. So let's switch this out here to a comb filter. Now, before I play something and before you play something, bring this bad boy down, this volume, and this is gonna be at negative 14.7 because it comes out pretty hot. So negative 14.7, just to save your ears a little bit like that. Right, so now it's gonna be a little bit too quiet, but we're gonna bring that up just a little bit later, right? So we don't really need to change too much here except this all pass. Now this one is kind of interesting. So listen as we move this all pass knob.
going to get that interesting tonality. So let's bring this up to 0 0.50. And it's a little quiet right now, but we're going to bring this up a little bit later here. So don't you worry. And then this next one here is going to be an MS-20. So out of the comb filter, turn this guy on and go to the MS-20. Now by default, or not by default, but how we set it up here, this is going to be at 124 hertz. So we bring this down to 124, something like that. And we're doing actually a couple things here. So one, we're modulating this by envelope three. So an envelope. So let's drag and drop this guy, envelope three on this one here. So envelope three, drag and drop here. And the amount is going to be 0.39. So increase this to 0.39 right over here. Let's take a look at actually the envelopes to see what this one is doing. So not too crazy, right? Attack one millisecond, decay 500, which is gonna be default, sustained down by default. But we do need to change the release a little, a little bit here. So 679, so increase that. 679. Okay, we have something like that. Now we need to attach our macro so we can kind of open up this filter a little bit. So this macro one's gonna be at 0 0.31, so drag and drop here, and this is gonna be 0 0.31. And once we turn this here, Get our high frequencies back and let's label this as cut off. Did I spell that right? I uh, probably not. That's fine. Okay, so moving on from there, now we need to add a little bit of resonance here so we can drag and drop this guy to our resonance. And then our amount is going to be 0.52. So quite a lot here. So 0.52. And where our macros are saved at, it's kind of like a little bit uh, here in the 200s ish. Okay, so now this is kind of fun. We're going to come to the, actually, you know what? We just do the utility engine now since we're here. So utility engine, pretty basic. I do this all the time. Let's turn on our oscillator and let's send this instead of filter to direct out. Let's bring this knob all the way down. And if we look here, this is going to be by macro three at 0.55. So quick, easy drag and drop. And then this is going to be 0.55. And whenever we want a little bit extra low end, then we can just increase the third macro. And let's label this sub. And the second one we should label as resonance or res. That's fine. And I left this one maybe a little bit more than halfway. So something like that. So now in the effects, let's start like bringing things up and making everything sound kind of cool We're what we're doing here. So first of all, we need to change this to an EQ. So multi or not multi parametric EQ. And this is kind of just taking some of those lows out and 114 Hertz. So the first band go down here to 114 or something like that. And then bring it down just a little bit. And that's all we're really doing there. The next one is going to be the multi band. And this is kind of where we're going to shape the sound, so to speak. So multi band, let's bring this here. And if we look at this guy, we're bringing the highs up just a little bit. Maybe the lows just a bit. Okay, something like that. And then our volumes are, should be the same. We're bringing this up a little bit, so negative 10, something like that. So now we're kind of getting there. Okay, pretty fun. Now here's where this cool trick happens. So pay attention if you haven't already. So this delay is kind of interesting. So if we add a delay here, so this guy, we're actually doing this in time, right? And the actual timing is 94.2 milliseconds. And we have such a little feedback. So first, let's bring our feedback down to, what is this, 0 0.176. So 0.176, right? And then our dry wet is going to be actually pretty high up there at 40. So we can bring this up to 40 for right now. So with that being said, it's pretty prominent delay, but we're not necessarily using this delay as like a delay, 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 delay kind of thing. It's supposed to be more of an effect, kind of like flam with the original signal. So that's why we changed this to the timing and then a very short value at 94.2 milliseconds. Something like that. It almost sounds like, um, like an effect that where we release the key, something else happens. Right, kind of sounds that weirdness to it. And then if we look back here on the original, we're really not doing any of the high pass or the low pass stuff because we want this not to necessarily be like a delay, but kind of a kind of part of the own of its own sound, if that makes any sense here. And for the stereo spread, we can bring this all the way to the top here. Right, something kind of like that. So with that being said, now we need to add another delay that acts as an actual delay, right? How we normally use a delay. So click this on here, and this delay is going to be in straight time at a value of 1 over 4, which is going to be default. Now here we're kind of bringing down the feedback a little bit as well, bringing down the stereo spread maybe just a bit. And then this value is going to be actually quite small. So we're going to be at 0 0.10. So that's going to be about 10% there. Not about, but exactly 10%. <laughs> 
So we had the first delay that makes that flammy thing, and then this next one is actually delaying the signal flam thing together, and you know, as a regular delay would work. <laughs> So now we're gonna add a little bit of reverb here. So this one, let's go ahead and add the reverb. Where are you, reverb? Kaboom, okay. So this one, the decay is pretty much default. The size is also default as well. And I guess it looks like most of this is going to be default, except we're gonna be bringing down this to 29. So, so 0.29 on the macro or 30, that's fine. We're pretty close here, maybe just a little bit more sub. It actually sounds pretty cool too on the low end, so if you drop this down an octave. It has a weird sound to it as well, if you bring it up an octave. All right, pretty cool. So the last thing we need to do here is going to be adding these uh, these effects to our fourth macro, which is very simple. So right, drag and drop the fourth one. We're going to do the delay, the EQ, and the multiband can be fine. They can leave those alone. So this delay, which is like that flaming one, 40%. So bring this down and bring this to 0 0.40. The next delay, let's do the same thing, drag and drop. And this one's going to be 10. So bring it down, 0 0.10. And then for the reverb, this is going to be 30 or 29, depending on how much reverb you want. Drag and drop, let's maybe bring this to 0.29, just like matching the other patch. Double click and label this as effects and bring the, bring the knob all the way to the top. And there you go. And what's also kind of interesting as well, if you go into the sequencer page, turn this on, go to the ARP. It can also make like a good R because we have no sustain as pretty consistent notes. And another thing I like doing before we let you go here is bringing all the way, all these to the left, getting two steps here, and then looking at the octave category and bring this up by one, something like that here. So now if we play a chord, it's a little bit more interesting. Maybe some drums. But yeah, long story short, it's cheesy, it's fun to play. And if you want this patch, if you don't want to make it, there's a link in the video description below and it can be yours. Thank you so much for watching. I believe we covered everything this patch has to offer and a little bit more with the arpeggio. So uh, yeah, have fun with this one and we'll see you in the next video.